he's got his eye on one athlete there, isn't he? Now he'd be he'd be pointing, I think, the marksman. Right, toe behind the line, behind the line. Yes, he's happy. Away we go. So it will be Jacqueline uh, Rotich gone sprinting out into the lead. That's uh, needs to be careful. It's not too lavish. It is 25 laps. We've seen what happened in the men's race where stuff in the first half of the race got neutralised very quickly. So again, we have a, a common ground for athletes that are specialist cross country runners, half marathon world record holder, 15k world best, one or two moving up from 5,000 meters. And again, for the 10th race out of 10, they're well strung out because they're after times as well as places. You can see the wave light technology, the blue light will reflect the ambition of the 258 pace. The green one, already a little bit further back, is for the Olympic qualifier at 31.25. So gradually the gap between the blue and the green lead lights will uh, separate out so that uh, those chasing pure qualification as opposed to those, those trying to win will, uh, will be different. 23 degrees, the temperature in the stadium, windless completely. So it has been a beautiful evening of athletics. Thanks for joining us. This is Jeff Whiteman on the live stream. This is the final race of the day. We've had amazing races. We've had world leads. We've had Olympic qualifiers. We've had disappointments. I'm sure we'll get exactly the same in this one, the final race, the Ethiopian women's 10,000 meter trials for Tokyo. And it looks as though it's gone out very, very quickly. I don't think uh, Rotic is due to be there for very long. I think she's only going to do uh, two, maybe three laps, and then it will be the secondary pacemaker that will uh, take it on. So two laps down, 23 to go. We don't have a, a caption clock for you on this one. And we already have fully 30 meters from first to last and we're only in the first kilometer of this 10 kilometer race the poor old drink station official there has had no takers i think it it's almost mandatory to uh offer it uh, in track uh, summer races these days over 10,000 meters but almost nobody takes it because they're only out there for 30 minutes Well, there's a couple of little uh, gaps opening up. It is very early days, but you would have expected to see it a little bit more tightly formed than this. They are that, There's the green light, still not that far behind the blue, but that's uh, 31.25 pace. 2.58 per kilometre is the uh, lead time, so that's sub-30 minute pace. Joss Hermans watching, uh, watching them from the barrier on the infield down the back straight. He will have clients in this race. He'll, I hope, be delighted with the way that it's uh, gone. It was a 70-second lap. They're on 29-21 pace at the front. So that's, uh, wow, uh, more than two minutes inside Olympic qualifying time. So if they kept this up, the whole field would run the Olympic qualifying time. I suspect there's a few uh, ups and downs for all of them to come through. Rotic has certainly uh, put in a shift at the front there. She, she's due to be uh, replaced by Kidsan Alema, the secondary pacemaker. You can see Letessenbeck Gide moving very uh, comfortably in third. 
it was October last year. It was a special event NN running at uh, Valencia World Record Day that lived up to its billing. And she was astonishing that day. And, and October, I mean, in 2019, we saw a World Championships in Doha in October because of the heat. Last year, it was really because the season didn't get started because of lockdown until August. So October was only a couple of months in. 71 second lap. So they're on 29, 25 pace. So the field is only 15 runners. I think we've lost uh, three or four at the back of the group. There's no juniors in this one. Yeah, there's three lap, four, four athletes uh, just drop, dropped off the back of it. Oh, no, more than that, actually. But there, there are no age group athletes, although this event is contested at world junior level. So it's, it's the seniors that have come through that uh, three-stage process to be invited here to Hengelo to challenge for the team. So... It, it's um it's an unusual one that it's been six months in the making and two stages there were people that were going well in january who've gone off the boil a little bit now there were people that came good in april who hopefully will be able to keep going here it's a lucky track for ten thousand meter racing we saw that incredible run by Sifan Hassan, where she was on her own from almost this point in the race and smashed the world record only uh, two days ago. Two days ago on Sunday, she's due to race over 1,500 metres tomorrow night. Still on the race, six minutes into the race. We, we've just gone through six minutes, and they're still uh, on schedule for 29.25. And as we so often see, the athletes directly behind the pacemaker are staying there. Ro Rotic is still doing a great job, going far more laps than we were expecting. But it's out the back of that group that one or two athletes have been dropped every kilometre or so. 7.03 into the race. Just keeping you right on time because I'm aware that on the uh, on screen you've lost the visual of the clock. But the clock is... Uh, operating you just have to rely on me to update you on that we've had so many world leads you'd expect it ethiopia are they the best or the second best or equal best distance running nation in the world this is the creme de la creme they've been invited here to challenge for the olympics so they're already world class just by getting on the plane to amsterdam but they're absolutely going after the the times we haven't had any uh I guess perhaps the men's 800 was a slight disappointment. There was something funny happened there uh, on the third 200 meter segment. But apart from that, every race has been super quick, lots of Olympic qualifying times and uh, run full on. So the green wave light is, is catching up a little bit on the blue still. There you can see we're 8.15 into what will be hopefully a low 29 minute race. And another one out the back of that group. So we've got one pacemaker and six athletes hopefully going the full distance. Big striding uh, Latessenbet Gide. Only 23 years of age. It was a 73 last lap. Rotic still running well. I think it's the secondary pacemaker, Kidson Alema, who's gone. So it's the Kenyan uh, doing the extra shift on her own. I think she was only due to be there for three or four laps but she's gone way beyond that and it's just as well because she's the last pacemaker standing the news at the start was that uh yehual or yellamzerf who was third in the world half marathon and won the uh, olympic candidates race fell early on happened whether she clipped a heel or something we didn't catch it or at least i didn't see it in vision but i think she's uh, continued but fell over right at the uh, early stages of the race right pacemaker is gone and Gide takes up the running we are 9 25 into the race they're on 29 27 pace
Should mention that Gidi was actually beaten in the uh, national championships. It was at an early stage and it was over 5,000 meters where she holds the world record. It was a high altitude, so she ran 1456, which doesn't compare that favorably unless you factor in the altitude with her world record of 1406 set in Valencia last year. I think she's a Joss Herman's client, so that's uh, who he's urging on. Ababel Yasane is the athlete behind her, the uh, world record holder from the Rack Half Marathon. I was there that day. That was an astonishing run. 64.31 she ran. So she's actually stepping down in distance to do this, and uh, Ide is stepping up as 5,000 meter world record holder. Logic would say that the further on it goes, the more it plays into Gide's hands, but she's the one taking it on, which is sort of counterintuitive. You th you'd think the half marathon runner would want to make it quick, consistently quick all the way around. We're on 29.28 pace. We've just had a 71 second lap. This is race 10 out of 10 at the Ethiopian Olympic trials being staged in Henglo at sea level with the benefit of beautiful racing conditions organized by Global Sports Communications. It's Jeff Whiteman with you. Hope you've enjoyed the racing. We've had some tremendous racing. We've had world leads. Let's see what uh, this final one yields. And remember, only three can be picked for any nation, whatever their strength in depth is. So we're 11.47 into the race. I think one of these uh, lights is set for uh, Sifan Hassan's world record. It may be one that's a little bit further around the bend. They, they will... Uh, that will become a bit more distinctive later on. They're certainly not running at, at world record pace, but they're on for 29.29, so they're not too far off. Blue, probably world record. And the uh, green will be the 2.58 per kilometre pace. So if that was Sifan Hassan's world record on Sunday on this very track, Look how far the blue light is ahead. It's only three strides. Hassan was on our own at this stage and uh, had the green light of the previous world record holder, Ayana, to uh, key in on. But uh, this Henglo track is like some sort of magic carpet, isn't it? Especially for female 10,000 metre runners, it would appear. So we're coming up to 13 minutes, 14 laps to go. Very fluid, languid running action, isn't it? I, I think it's deceptive when you watch Gide because she looks like uh, she's almost on a training run and yet this is, well, one of the fastest 10,000s we'll ever have seen. Only 23 years old. Great on the roads. Brilliant at 5,000 metres. And is she going to give herself I obviously as world record holder she would have to be in the thinking of the selectors at 5,000 meters whatever she does here but is this her best bet for gold in Tokyo or a podium position in Tokyo once again the blue light just a body length ahead of her is the world record that was set here on Sunday and I was in the stadium for that and that that was there was no let up from Sifan Hassan I mean she just ran fluidly and strongly but Gide looks magnificent at this stage and so too the half marathon runner behind her Ababel Yeshine we're 14 minutes and seven seconds into the race
what a what a strange thing it would be if we had a world record in this race it would mean that on the same track Hassan was world record holder stadium record holder track record holder for two days they're looking uh, magnificent at the moment the the first of the lapped runners ahead of them oh what was that a little pat on the back as she went by perhaps a training partner same hairdresser And that manoeuvre has opened Gide away from the chaser. 29.06 was the world record. Suddenly she is up with the blue light, Gide, the world 5,000 metre record holder. Joss Hermans, manager to both of them, Hassan and Gide. Adies Missiani of Ethiopia is going to be lapped very shortly. Now Joss gets off his barrier and lets her know it is on. <laughs> the track record is on. It also happens to be the world record. Running on her own, I bet in the peripheral vision of her eye she can just see that blue light. Now less than a stride in front of her. She needs to hold it together here because Hassan didn't have any bad patches in that uh, world record run. She was even, smooth and fluid throughout. She even closed strongly. Gide is going to have to do something very similar. She's a very uh, toe-striking runner, isn't she? Very up on her forefoot and quite a high kickback of the uh, trail leg for a 10,000 meter runner. It looks more like a 3,500 runner. The arm action very deliberate as well. So the indications are that uh, this far into the race the world record is still possible and it was a world record that was uh, 10 seconds inside the existing one. Ayana at the rims in winning there in the heat of the Olympic final. I think there were about 40 odd runners in that race, 43 or something mad. There were no heats, it was a straight final. So, huge number of uh, lap runners to negotiate. Gide does not have that. She can just concentrate on her own running now. Well, it's metronomic, and that's what she needs. I, I don't. I just can't decide myself how uh, helpful the wave light technology is. It certainly doesn't do any harm, especially if you're going well. If you're going badly and the lights start moving away from you, then it is quite demoralising. But also, I don't know how closely she can see that. Her eye line will be on these lap runners up ahead. That was Valentine de True from her management company. Works with uh, Joss Hermans, giving, and there's Joss himself saying. Yep, it's on. Let's go. So behind her, we've got Ababel still in second place. Then we have got Gemetu, world rank number nine athlete, who was fourth in the world championships over 5,000. She's in third. Then we've got Sigi Gebrasalama, 3057 runner from Hengelo, who was fourth in the trials and is the national champion. And then we've got Yalamzerf Yehualu, who was third in the uh, World Half Marathon. Nine laps to go. We're on 18 minutes and 47 seconds. We're on 29.22 pace. Well, we saw Hassan lap almost the whole field, and that could be what Gide is going to have to do. She's giving her nostrils lots of attention. I don't know if she's had too many COVID tests up there. Certainly, I, I think it was one a day for athletes that were uh, here and at the European Team Championships the previous weekend. That's just life now for athletes that are travelling. COVID before travel, COVID on arrival tests, daily uh, lateral flow tests. It's just a fact of life if you travel along with all the notifications and isolations that you have to do. 
But Gide is a long way from home. She's found a way through that. Concentrating hard, powering her way through the field. Still on 29-22 pace. We surely could not get a world record to uh, end these Ethiopian trials, could we? Especially one that was set in the same place barely 48 hours before. And to be world 5,000 and 10,000 meter record holder would be remarkable. One in October, one in early June. Look at her head on. It's that very deliberate running action, isn't it? The, the uh, arms just coming across the center point slightly, but in particular that high kickback and bounce in her stride. So the supporters, such as they are, have stayed in the stadium with eight laps to go. She was on 19 minutes and 57 seconds. She needs not to have a bad patch here if that world record is going to be possible. She surely got the record, the race one. So she has uh, probably got her ticket to Tokyo and probably she's got options at 5,000 metres if she wants them. So we're beyond 21 minutes now. Seven laps to go. 21.07 was the time into the last three kilometers of a 10 kilometer race race 10 out of 10 one of the lap runners daring to try and tuck in at world record pace good luck with that one well anybody thinking about a 10,000 meters in 2022 you surely have Henglo on your wish list they've been very very fortunate with the weather which has been atrocious in Netherlands like most other places in Europe through uh, April and May. But this is uh, even better weather than Hassan had, and that may end up being the difference in the closing stages. Hassan did not wilt at all, but Gide is not wilting at all at the moment. And she's gradually accelerating. The laps are marginally quicker each time. They're certainly not slowing. They're like a few tenths quicker each lap. Hassan, I think, did a training session after after finishing the race. She was very elated. We had all all sorts of um, flinging ourselves to the track and wrapping the comedy check around her head. But she was absolutely delighted with that. But then, some while afterwards, did a training session on the warm up track. Quite a meaty one as well, I think. Six laps to go. Twenty two sixteen. So the world record is still possible. Twenty-nine oh six eighty-two. Hassan said afterwards she thought she could go under twenty-nine minutes if she needed to. Well, it's it, there's deep concentration going on here. I, is she looking at the lights? Is she aware of them as the uh, the evening sunshine fades? I guess there'll be more brightness in them. They're on the either side of that curb rail. Still on 29.06 pace. The world record is 29.06.82. If you've stayed with us from the beginning of this coverage, well done. Thank you. It promised to be one of the uh, best carnivals of endurance running that we've seen in the last Olympic cycle. And it's been great right the way through from 800 metres. But the women's 10,000 was on last, maybe by accident, maybe deliberately. But it could be a real blockbuster finale. And it rides with this woman. Letessen Bet Gide, the world 5,000 metre record holder, on schedule for the world 10,000 metre record. Getting urged on by a very knowledgeable crowd. The athletes you can see in the background have already raced. And uh, Joss Herman's trying to clear the track. The etiquette is if you're lapped, you should move out. And she's done that. Fair play. Not many athletes experience that. If you're as world class as this invited field, you won't have experienced being lapped very often so you won't be thinking about what to do a 69 second lap with 2000 meters to go so it is very much on the world record you haven't got time to go away and make a cup of tea because it's happening now and it's live on the stream from Hanglo look at that how tantalizing is that that blue wave is the ghost of Sifan Hassan from Sunday afternoon 
Lots of people shouting the detail of what she needs to do. So strong. Four laps to go. She was on 24.35. Now, I, you'll have to rely on me here in the closing stages. I know I'm giving you lap by lap updates. The, the wave light technology helps you because the blue light is where the world record sits. The end time that we're going to be looking for on the clock on the Toblerone just beyond the finish line is 29.06.82. If it happens, it will be one of the shortest lived endurance records ever. It's probably happened during heats and semi-finals of an Olympic Games that one heat has set a world record and another one has come back at it. But they're rare things in athletics because they're good. We're in the era of the super shoes. Hengelo is a dream ride for athletes, especially at 10,000 metres. There's the clock, 25.37. Three laps to go, 25.42 was the split. Well, Hassan was just like a machine in the closing stages, but Gide... I wonder if they'll both be in the same 10,000 metre race in uh, Tokyo in the World Championships. They've both got options at 5,000 metres and in the case of Hassan at 1,500 metres. But my goodness, what a 48 hours it has been in this little town in the east of Holland. This track, which has seen so much history, just belongs to women's 10,000 metre running at the moment. 68 seconds was the last lap that we saw. So all she's got is the urging on of Martijn Vischer on the uh, PA system. The, the supporters there aren't really any spectators to speak of so she's having to generate the motivation for this herself she's been absolutely expressionless there's been no obvious fatigue it's a bouncy stride that she has to maintain but she's doing it joss will be almost in lane one with her there's uh valentine de true Joss has seen so many world records. He's mainly getting rid of uh, people that are being lapped so she can run the shortest line. Oh, he's running it with her, isn't he? Still ahead of world record at this point. It will be the bell this time. My goodness me. We will be talking about this. Which venue saw two world records in 48 hours in the same discipline, same gender? Oh. 29.06.82 awaits Guy Day. This will be the bell. Still got time to clear the nostrils. A good sign. There's the bell. Ask not for whom it tolls. We're on 28 minutes. Oh, it's not a given, this one. It's not a given. It needs something a bit special on this last lap. She did a 66. She needs another 66. It's going to be very close. But it is going to be one of the shortest lived world records in history. Uh, she's got a lot of bodies on the track. Joss is hoovering them off the uh, side there. So she has a clear run down the straight. Wow. Two amazing women. Two solo world record attacks. They will go head to head potentially in Tokyo. But here we go, last 100 metres for Letes and Met. Gide, they're making a way for her. Is she going around the outside? She doesn't care. She's coming down the inside. 29.06.82 to break a world record that was set here just on Sunday. Keep your eye on the clock in the background. I think she's going to do it. It's going to be close, but she's going to get there. 29.02, a new world record. She holds both world records, 5,000 and 10,000. She thanks Divine Powers for that one. Wow. If you're a woman 10,000 metre runner, come to Hengelo. Has that time, is it 29.01? Who would have thought that we would see female athletes on the brink of breaking 29 minutes? 29.01.04. She holds both of the long track world records. One in October 
last year. And now the Tessenbet Gide is the fastest of all time. I wonder what Sifan Hassan thinks watching this. She ran brilliantly to smash the old world record and it has gone by another five seconds on the same track two days later. Crazy times, literally. Don't step on the track, yeah. Be careful. Be careful out there. Oh. Now, we haven't really been paying attention to what's been going on behind. That was a 63 second last lap. So she went from being just inside to way inside. Final few finishes coming in, one or two of them needing a little bit of help. A reminder that the Olympic qualifying mark, which I think is still running, is 31.25. So a few athletes who were double lapped still to come in. There was an issue with the lapping, especially for the Australian women on um, Sunday and the lap count, because I think the clock stopped and showed zero to go. But that was for Hassan. So we're on 31 minutes now. So anybody finishing in the next 20 seconds is inside the Tokyo qualifier. Joss, the man who cleared the track for her and her manager, has now seen two world records on this track at this meeting at this stadium that he helped make so famous oh yeah we need to keep the inside lane clear a bit of respect to the runners still finishing and to social distancing unless you're in the same bubble last lap of 63 what a race that is going to be in tokyo Valentine de True from her management company. There it is on the background. So we've only just gone through the Olympic qualifying automatic time of 31.25. So there are an awful lot of people that she lapped at least once who still went inside Tokyo qualification. So if you tuned in to the live stream, who'd have thought it? A world record to culminate what have been 10 brilliant races to uh, attempt to finalize the Tokyo team for the Ethiopian Endurance Stars. They won eight medals across all sports in Rio. It was a good showing, but all of them were done in the distances which we've seen tonight and the uh, marathon on the road. So it's a heavy responsibility to, re to wear the red, green and gold of Ethiopia in Tokyo. But by today's evidence, there will be a few medals to be had on that track. Oh. Well, we have athletes still finishing. We'll bring you the uh, results caption when we can. I hope the uh, absence of a, a clock in the bottom right-hand uh, side of the screen didn't uh, spoil from your enjoyment of that world record attempt. We kind of knew what was uh, in prospect, and, and wave-like technology certainly helps with spectating on from that perspective, doesn't it? But two world records in the same discipline on the same track in two days. There's Gide. She did. She was a bit more uh, subdued, wasn't she, than Hassan? Hassan was uh, uh, flinging herself on the track and didn't didn't know what to do. Uh, this is a much cooler customer. There it is, confirmation bottom left of a world record, and not her first one either. I wonder if she's off to do a track session as uh, Sifan Hassan did. Just interested to see on the scrolling caption how many women put themselves automatically in a qualification position for uh, Tokyo because you can see with 29.01 there's still uh, two and a half minutes for people to finish so even folk that were lapped uh, could be in that frame. We've got Barun, uh, Francine Neon Saba in there. I, I didn't see her during the race but let's uh, catch up with that on the results. And we had uh, Dolshi Tesfu of uh, Eritrea. 
So that time has been corrected very slightly to the hundredth for the uh, new official world record, 2901.03. I think the hundredths were adjusted. What a time. I mean, there, there will be very good runners around the world, male runners, thinking, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do 2901. The gaps are narrowing between uh, male and female distance running and certainly the old what used to be thought of as good times previously in the era of super shoes has uh, changed out of all recognition but it is still head-to-head -head racing that we enjoy most isn't it and we'll have plenty of that in tokyo hassan against gide netherlands against ethiopia won't that be a great one straight final no pacemakers they can both close quickly they both set world records in Henglo in June. <laughs> it's still a shirt sleeves evening in Henglo. The weather could not have been better. It stayed at around 23 degrees, just slightly clammy at 49-50% uh, humidity. Pacemakers all did a great job. When we think back through the card of 10 races, 800s maybe struggled to get their automatic qualifiers. One or two of the steeplechase runners will be disappointed, but ever since then, at 1,500, 5,000. So I think we're going to have a, a little interview with Gide. I don't know uh, in which language. She's Am Harrick. The uh, host broadcaster is Dutch. You may be listening in English, but let's see how we do. That's the mandatory shot, isn't it? That's, that's one you'll be seeing, whatever website or publication you uh, tune into. Thanks, by the way, let's run uh, fans. I'm sure the uh, the message balls will be uh, on fire about this one, but I hope you enjoyed it. It's a favourable time in the US to have uh, watched what's happening and see how you mark your card for Tokyo as far as the Ethiopian team is concerned. Here we go. This is my time. You just run as fast as possible. You, you run as fast as possible. Did you know that you were running the world record? Did you know that? Yes, I expected to run it. You expected to run it? So only now you have got the world record 5,000 meters and 10,000 meters. What's the next? I think uh, I will try to run to the end. World record again. Beneath the 29? Yes, my world record I will try to. 2856. Okay, now the final is a tight. Over the 29th time before we get to the world. She's quite shy. Uh, for somebody that's so uh, emphatic on the track, she was a little bit diffident there. Of course, speaking in a second language, Josh takes, makes all his athletes learn English. So Hailey and uh, Ken and Issa Bikili, it didn't come naturally to them. He sent them to English classes. She may be off there right now. But a uh, very charming manner and uh, what a way to round off the evening. Oh, yeah, she's signing me uh, anti-doping form. That's, uh, that's where she'll be going. Her evening is uh, sorted out for a doping control, track session, English lessons. The wave light's still going. Nou, dan wil ik iedereen een hele goede thuisreis wensen met dit prachtige eindresultaat van deze. So her comments were that she was expecting uh, to run that well. Her next target is sub 29. Might take that to win in Tokyo.